a warm welcome to another edition of To The Point. BJP is going to hold its national executive in Bhubaneswar on 15th and 16th, especially coming as it does after the massive mandate it got in the recently held assembly elections. What is the political message behind this national executive in Bhubaneswar and does it ring alarm bells for the Naveen Patnaik government? Joining me now is BJD leader Pinaki Misra. Pinaki, welcome on To The Point. Thank you. Let me begin by asking you, uh, if you look at the evolution of uh, Biju Janta Dal since 1997 and the way it has now performed this year in its panchayat elections, uh, do the panchayat elections really shock the party? The panchayat elections uh, come on the back of a 20-year-old government. Actually, 17 and a half years. In the 2014 elections, the BJD got 43% vote. We are down by 3%. After 17 years, we are now down to 40%. Mm -hmm. So the panchayat elections have to be seen in the perspective of the complete collapse of the Congress in Orissa. In 2014, we got 43%, Congress got about 28%, the BJP got about 22%. The Congress this time has lost almost 15% vote, which is all an anti-BJD vote. And the entire vote has gone lock, stock and barrel to the BJP, which has now got 33% of the vote. So that's the basic problem. So we are at 40%, the BJP is at about 32-33% now, and the Congress is down to almost 12-13%. That's the problem. So which means that... It's become a bipolar fight, and 140 seats were lost you know, we have 853 seats. Last time we had 653 seats out of 853 Eight, uh, in, in 2012 panchayat elections. We've, this time we've got about 479. We lost 140 seats in just four districts. Balangir, Mayurbhanj, uh, Kalahandi and Sundargarh. Now, what the BJP cleverly did was they farmed out these, these are all our border districts. So they farmed out two districts to Mr. Raman Singh to handle from Chhattisgarh and two to Mr. Raghbir Das to handle from Jharkhand. Okay. So there was a pincer movement. There is no doubt. In a sense, we were taken by surprise uh, at the collapse of the Congress. But, you know, our survey showed the Congress have vote had come down, but only by about 4 to 5 percent. Nobody expected the Congress to collapse like But this. collapse of Congress and the rise of BJP, does that worry Biju Janta Dal? You know, not really. We've swept coastal Orissa, even today. Mm -hmm. uh, the BJP is now number two. The fight in Orissa is for who will be number two. Earlier it was the Congress which was number two. The BJP is now taken over as the number two. The Congress is number three. That's the only difference. Uh, it makes no difference to the Biju Janta Dal, except, as I said, we've dropped 3% vote, which we need to check and ensure that we go back to our 42-43%. In which case, we are over 100 seats in the assembly and over 16 to 17 seats in parliament. Why do senior leaders and senior parliamentarians from your party are out in a public spat over the fact whether the party should go in an introspection mode or not? Uh, leaders like uh, Jay Panda, Tathagat Satpati, we've seen them involved in a Twitter war recently. Uh, what, what, what is this symptom actually? You know, this whole problem with Twitter as a mechanism is uh, when you're sitting up late at night getting bored and you shoot off something all of a sudden and the you know media immediately latches onto it and this is a big problem with Twitter which is why I completely have avoided Twitter because uh, I, I really believe it's it's such a juvenile uh, you know system of communication uh, these are individuals I don't want to comment upon there are no other senior leaders where there is a problem even with these gentlemen I don't think there's a problem I think a light-hearted Twitter was sent out by one. Uh, the other was goaded by his followers on Twitter to react. So he seems to have reacted with a little more vigor than was needed. And I think that's where the matter has rested. But I don't really give this any seriousness at all. There is no question of any infighting in the party. That's the difference between the BJD and the Congress. And in fact, the BJP, which is in, by the way, in Orissa, is in tatters. I mean, there are five factions which are fighting each other savagely mm -hmm. and which will ensure the doom of each other. 
So please understand that in Orissa there is only one leader, Naveen Patnaik. Uh, we have 20 MPs in Parliament, we have 117 MLAs in the Assembly and there is no question of this party going anywhere, breaking, nothing. But BJP party president uh, Amit Shah is going to give a clarion call in Bhuvaneshwar to say that Naveen Patnaik government will be thrown out in 2019. You know, that's their right. Uh, they are a political party. Uh, it's, they have a right to aspire. So, uh, he may give a clarion call. Uh, Narendra Modi ji at the height of his popularity in uh, 2014 came to Orissa, I think, three or four times. Uh, carried out a massive campaign in Orissa. The people still gave 20 out of 21 seats uh, to the BJD and 117 out of 147 to the BJD in the assembly. So, uh, any clarion call is for their own cadres to rally. Uh, I don't think it will have that much impact on the people of Orissa because I still believe Naveen Patnaik is head and shoulders over any other leader in that state. It's a, it's a real uh, chasm between him and any other leader. But coming back to uh, what actually was the content of uh, Jay Panda's uh, Twitter, he basically said that, you know, it's time for the party to introspect. And it was a similar thing which was sounded by Naveen Patnaik also in one of his rallies. No, that was not his Twitter. That was, he wrote a, a long piece uh, in the Samaj Yeah, in his opinion paper. piece as well. Yeah, yeah, he wrote a Samaj opinion piece uh, asking for introspection. Uh, a lot of people have controverted many of the things he said there mm -hmm. uh, and said that uh, some of the things may have been uh, hyped up more than, uh, you know, uh, actually obtained at the ground level. For instance, uh, you know, when he, when he relates back to the amount of uh, energy and time he has spent in building this party from 97, a lot of people have said that that may be stretching it. Uh, he came into uh, prominence much later uh, in the party, but be that as it may, you're right, Mr. Patnaik himself has actually said that uh, there is need for introspection. If we lose 3% vote, we have to introspect. There's no question about it. Uh, we have a problem in these border areas. We have to uh, look to what went wrong because increasingly it appears that the Congress is not going to be able to pick up its vote. And uh, therefore, it's going to become a bipolar fight. And if it is a bipolar fight, uh, then it's going to be a tight fight. So therefore, we need to ensure that we not only retain our vote, but we also get some of the Congress vote into our kitty, rather than the entire Congress vote going into the BJP kitty. So it's, it's a, there's a time for introspection, there's a time for planning, there's a time for uh, you know uh, foresight, vision. And I think Naveen Patnaik has all those qualities. He's shown that in four elections. But why, why did this Twitter spat and also the opet page of uh, Jay Panda was made to look like as if, you know, all is not well within Biju Janta Dal. Naveen Patnaik is losing steam and it was made to look like that. You know, the BJP is masterly at propaganda. Much of this has been spawned by their propagandists, both in the social media space as well as in the regional media. You have to understand, we Naveen Patnaik has been there now unchallenged for 17 years, four terms. He's now into, you know, into his fourth term. Uh, therefore, there is bound to be a little bit of fatigue, as it were, uh, in the media, which now wants to get some masala to be able to, you know, get a good news out. Uh, I mean, you just can't be a one-way street. That is Naveen Patnaik and nothing else. And that's what's been happening for the last 17 years. But why these uh, uh, leaders uh, went out in public and, you know, uh, they exchanged uh, a verbal spat, if you might call it? I thought it was avoidable. It should have been, like I said, it appeared to be a light-hearted banter from one side and then uh, a response from the other side. It, this was highly avoidable. Uh, you know, they've, they've all been MPs four times, five times. Uh, they should understand that, uh, you know, after, behind the party, uh, there is nothing else. But what after we've the heard, party, there's nothing else. What uh, we've heard from the senior leaders, of course, I'm not going to name those leaders, but we've heard that uh, the, the party forum basically is not functioning. You've not had a political affairs committee meeting. So how do the, the leaders uh, go and uh, air their grievances uh, to Naveen Patnaik? Naveen Patnaik's doors are open literally 18 hours a day. He, his doors are open for anybody to meet. Anybody can meet him at any time. And without an appointment. I mean, this is the only party president you can, Naveen Nivas, you can just drive in and he's there and you meet him. It's as informal as that. 
So, I mean, this is really, you know, you don't need to, this is not some national party with, you know, 10,000 leaders that you need to have a political affairs committee. It's not, not like the Congress working committee and all that, you know, the paraphernalia that they go into. I mean, basically, it is Naveen Patnaik and some senior leaders around him who take decisions in a cohesive manner. And their doors are always open for exchange and interchange of ideas. So, whoever saying this uh, is not our party people. This is, I think, a lot of propaganda flowing from the BJP, uh, which is, uh, you know, suddenly sort of, they have been very anguished. I'll tell you, the BJP has been very anguished at the manner in which after the Kandamal riots of 2008, Naveen Patnaik jettisoned the uh, alliance in 2009. Right. The BJP, after all, had a virtually a 45-55 sharing in Orissa. They shared power for nine years with, with Naveen Patnaik. And they were wiped out in 2009. And, you know, they have never forgiven him or forgotten the humiliation of, uh, you know, losing out not just an alliance partner, but the people rejecting them the way they did. But are you, are you really worried with what uh, Tathagat said that uh, BJP is trying to engineer a split within Biju Jantadal with the help of one of your own MPs? And uh, are you also worried or maybe Naveen Patnaik, is he worried at this point of time? Look, let me tell you but something. But BJP might resort to tactics. Let me, let me tell you something. Naveen Patnaik was not a politician when he came to power, when he, was, when he was, became an MP for the first time in the seat vacated by his late father, Biju Babu. Biju Babu was a legendary figure in Orissa, cutting across party lines on a bipartisan basis. And they felt that to, to keep his legacy going, let's get a member of the family because that by-election had to be fought immediately. I think, you know, it reminds me a lot of what happened with Mrs. Indira Gandhi in the late 60s when a cabal brought her to power, thinking that she is a gungi gudia uh, who will uh, kowtow, literally as it were, to what they decide and uh, will go along their lines. I think uh, a cabal decided to bring Naveen Patnaik in thinking he is an academician, he is a writer, he is an author, he is not a politician, so therefore he would be a puppet in their hands. They didn't realize that he is an extremely intelligent man who took to politics like a you know, like a duck takes to water. And a number of people have then, since then, tried to cross swords with Naveen Patnaik. I mean, the number runs literally into multiples of dozens. They've all fallen by the wayside. They've been destroyed in politics. They have never had a future in politics. So when the BJP today tries to break this party or any individual tries to act at their behest to break this party, he is committing harakiri. I can tell you that. He is committing suicide. But what because, about... Because there is no future in this party or in Odisha politics, uh, in my opinion, if you have betrayed Naveen Patnaik or if you have backstabbed Naveen Patnaik. Uh, there is no future. But... Uh, and history has shown that incidentally. And I don't want to take names. But, I mean, the names can just come off my fingertips. But what about the reports uh, when you read that uh, uh, the party, the, B the Biju Jarta Dal, not only the government, but the party also now is run by bureaucrats. Now, I would like to uh, uh, illustrate you with, with the columns which have just come out. Like, for example, Kumi Kapoor has written that, you know, they've compared AIA, DMK and uh, BJD. And uh, Mr. Pandyan, who was in the Naveen Nivas, an IS officer, he's been compared with Sasi Kala. Uh, is it really true that the party is so much in the hands of bureaucracy? Look, there is no doubt that Naveen Patnaik relies on the bureaucracy hugely. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that's the framework of the Indian constitution. The entire Indian polity is based on the bureaucracy. And he's a very old-fashioned British-style politician in that sense. So, yes, he, he, he has a dependence on the bureaucracy. Many of us who are politicians uh, sometimes... Yes, tend to resent that a bit, but ultimately he's his own master. You know, uh, make no mistake that any decision that is taken eventually is only given to the bureaucrats to execute. So whoever thinks uh, you know, that anybody determines what is to happen is wrong. Yes, if somebody is to determine how to execute it, uh, you know, when an order is given by Naveen Patnaik, then of course there will be not one, there will be two, three, four, five trusted people who automatically you have to trust. And that's the way politics functions. I mean, in Delhi, for instance, Mr. Narendra Modi 
is uh, completely dependent, on, for instance, on Mr. P.K. Mishra, mm -hmm. on Mr. Ajit Doval. So he's dependent on bureaucrats himself. And these are very powerful people who are much more powerful than ministers. So what is the BJP talking about? Or what is any, you know, but these columnists should first write about what is happening in Delhi. But uh, is it I mean, true? Do, you, do you know that no cabinet minister is more powerful than the prime minister's office today, which includes Mr. Doval, Mr. Jay Shankar, and Mr. P.K. Mishra? No, no cabinet minister has more power than they have. So therefore, you know, don't you see that it's, it's the same thing. So why compare it with the, the IIDMK, compare it to the BJP in Delhi? But uh, there are many people who are saying that, you know, BJD is going back to the old dark days of 1990s. The issues on which your party fought the J.B. Patnaik uh, government initially, that was widespread corruption, then sheltering of people with criminal backgrounds. All that is happening right now. How far are those reports true? I don't think that's correct at all. I don't think, uh, you know, except this one issue of chit fund, which is really an, a, a pan-Indian issue. Mm -hmm. It's endemic to India. It, we've got this problem not just, not just in Orissa. We've got this problem in West Bengal, in, in, in the Northeast. Uh, you've got this problem in the South. This is a pan-Indian problem. And I think by legislation, something should be done about this. But apart from the chit fund problem, where a couple of names from our party have figured, but names have figured from every party, from the Congress, from the BJP, Cutting across party lines, names have figured. Nothing is proved yet. But apart from the chit fund, there is no other issue of allegation of corruption that has ever come up. In any case, not against Naveen Patnaik personally at all. I mean, he is still Mr. Squeaky Clean, by far 24 karat clean. So therefore, uh, you know, the, I don't think this issue of corruption today is an issue of uh, in fact, uh, which hits Naveen Patnaik. But in fact, uh, BJT leader uh, Jay Panda also has written in one of his columns that Naveen Patnaik has failed to stem corruption in the party. On what basis is he no, making that, think, uh, leveling that allegation? I don't think he's quite said that as directly. There may be some uh, oblique reference uh, you know, that he's made to corruption. I think it's incumbent upon him then to flag it. You know, rather than making oblique references, if he feels there is corruption, then by all means highlight it. Get an FIR filed. As simple as that. You, you know, corruption doesn't end by writing columns. I'm sorry. But uh, which way do you really see BJD moving at the moment? Uh, there are reports that uh, Naveen Patnaik is not keeping well. There are uh, reports of uh, him having liver cirrhosis and he going uh, for his treatment to Michigan. Uh, what is, I mean, the reports have again started coming in. What happens to BJD after Naveen Patnaik? You know, this is the problem with social media and the problem with gossip and innuendo. Let me tell you, Nilu, as I was telling you before we started our interview, Mr. Patnaik's vital parameters, which includes his heart, his liver, his kidneys, uh, you know, his basic functions are healthier than your and mine. I'm being honest <laughs> with you. Uh, you know, and I th consider myself a fit person, but he's a very, very fit person physically. Make no mistake about it. He's got tremendously good genes. You know, he's part, partly from Ganjam, which is the, the ultimately fittest genes of Orissa. He's part Ganjam, part Kashmiri, part Punjabi. So let me tell you, he's, he's genetic. But people from Orissa uh, themselves have said that in recent public meetings and all, he wasn't seen too well as compared to the earlier times. He was seen walking slow, sluggish. Uh, that was the kind of demeanor which he had. You know, I think yeah, he, maybe he needs to exercise a little more. I, I keep telling him that he really needs to exercise a little more, which is good for everybody. But apart from the little lack of exercise, but he works very hard. You know, during election time, you have to see the kind of effort he puts in. It's extraordinary, you know. He will do three parliamentary constituencies in a day. I'm part of only one parliamentary segment with him. And I'm fatigued. And I, you know, I'm much younger than him. And he carries on. So you have to see when he's electioneering. It's breathtaking the kind of stamina and the kind of, uh, you know, sheer physical force and strength that he exudes. So, uh, uh, I, I think many of these things are really uh, uh, just a matter of gossip and a matter of sometimes perhaps wishful thinking, you know, that if he's not well, you know, it'll, it'll suit some people. Well, let me tell you, uh, he's going to disappoint everybody. He's going in into 2019 with all guns blazing. And I think with the kind of uh, um, rejigging in the party that he is now determined to bring about, mm -hmm. uh, and government as well, uh, he is heading for a fifth term.
But uh, when you say rejigging, is it in terms of uh, structural changes or organizational changes? I think it needs a little bit of tinkering. I don't think there is any large scale. The BJD is an extra, you know, I've been in the Congress party and I was in the Congress. The first time I was a member of parliament was 1996 from the Congress. I then lost two elections, 98 and 2004 with the Congress. So I've seen the way the Congress party functions, uh, you know, from very, very close. Uh, in fact, I was the treasurer of the Congress, Odisha Congress, when I left them and joined the BJD in 2009. The BJD is like a well-oiled army machine. No national party will ever be able to match the BJD in terms of its sheer electoral heft in terms of uh, you know the way it approaches elections, uh, the, the way Naveen Patnaik masterminds these elections, the way he leads the campaign. Uh, come a general election and you know the Orissa elections are along with the general elections. We'll see how much heft the BJP can then uh, bring to the table. But the rural point. parts of Orissa, uh, I was uh, touring the rural parts of Orissa where people said that the way uh, Narendra Modi is wooing the rural voters uh, especially, uh, Naveen Patnaik definitely has a fight on his hands. There's no question, every election is a fight. Uh, it's up to the people. If, uh, you know, we have to convince the people that our policies and our government, uh, which is uniquely tailored to the needs of Orissa, is much better uh, fashioned uh, for their welfare rather than as a national party like the Congress or the BJP. Uh, we still have two years to go. I think the Modi magic uh, is, uh, is far too hyped in my opinion. Uh, I think UP, they've succeeded with 38% of the vote. Let's look at the next election. I expect a Mahagad Bandhan in UP next time mm -hmm. where uh, Mayavati, Akhilesh, the Congress and RLD will all come together. Uh, I think, uh, and with the Mahagathbandhan in Bihar as well, they will have a lot on their hands in North India first. They have anti-incumbency in Rajasthan, they have anti-incumbency in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, they have a lot of anti-incumbency in Gujarat. Uh, it will all depend on how much the Congress is able to rev up its its carders and its party. But what I've not been able to understand is that it's almost like 17 and a half years of a stable government by Naveen Patnaik and his party. But why has Orissa not been able to shed off its uh, poverty baggage? It's still called a poor state where, uh, you know, pictures of starvation, hunger, they, they are still there, they still exist. <clears throat> there are, there are uh, a number of historical factors that go into it. You know, when you're starting from zero, uh, it's a it's a huge leap when you reach five or six. When other states start from you know four or five and then reach seven or eight, for us to have reached from zero to five or six is a massive leap. Uh, the, the demographics of Orissa has changed completely. You know I've seen Orissa for the last uh, twenty five years. Uh, you have to look at the malnutrition is almost gone. Uh, except maybe some remote parts in some tribal areas where perhaps the government's outreach uh, is, has not been enough. We need to do much more, no question. But, uh, you know, the poverty index, again, cannot be radically altered because despite all the mineral wealth that we have, ultimately we get very little by way of royalty. You have to understand that. It all goes out. The system that we have in this country Unfortunately, no state can really get to milk its mineral resource for its own people. Everything is shared and shared in a totally lopsided manner. Mm -hmm. All the coal goes out of our state, all the iron ore, all the bauxite, everything will go out of our state. But it will all go into the central government's So kitty. this 42% figure which the central government says it keeps sending to the states, that also is not sufficient for Orissa. Well, you know, 42% again is all on paper. At the end of the day, you know, if you really come down to it, if you look at the hard figures, this is, these are India, unfortunately, this, this jugglery that takes place, the 7% plus growth rate, and you know, this, these are all complete jugglery of numbers. Uh, at the end of the day, the state really gets a fraction of what it should in an equitable distribution setup. Therefore, we feel that perhaps GST may actually become uh, a slightly more equitable uh, redistribution formula, which is why we supported it. 
Uh, let me come back to the legacy question again of Naveen Patnaik. Does it not worry the, the Biju Janta, the leaders, that there is no second rung leadership? We don't see anybody after Naveen Patnaik. You know, I'm not going to comment on this because I'm hoping that Naveen Patnaik will not only lead us into the next election, but beyond. Uh, every political party has a way, ultimately nobody is, you know, immortal. I mean, there's no doubt about that, nobody lives forever. But every political party uh, finds its own equilibrium, finds its own, uh, you know, level of comfort with the a, with a leadership. Uh, so I guess, and, it, and leadership evolves uh, as, as, you know, times change. So uh, nobody is really worried about it. The, 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 you know, the fact that the Janta movement survived after Biju Patnaik, who was such a tall leader. Everybody thought after Biju, what? I mean, he was a leader who was virtually, uh, you know, on nodding terms with Pandit Nehru and used to call Indra in Gandhi Hindu. He was that senior and sort of, you know, he had that kind of stature. Everybody thought the Janta movement in Orissa is over after Biju Patnaik. But how far and along it... came Naveen Patnaik and look what he did up there after he surpassed his father. But how far is it true there are reports saying that uh, Naveen Patnaik's sister, Geeta, is now, is, is staying there all the time in Naveen Nivas. She's going to take uh, hold completely of the party. Completely wrong, completely wrong. Geeta has, uh, uh, you know, she's got homes in many continents. Uh, she's got a home in, fabulous home in New York. She's got a fabulous home in... Uh, in uh, London, she's got uh, son is in Singapore, so she's got homes in several continents. But she's attached to India and to Orissa. There's no question. Uh, so therefore, every year she spends roughly a month and a half, two months in uh, Delhi as well as Orissa. It's been happening for the last 17, 18 years. It's just that I don't know why all of a sudden this year has become a big news. But she's no, because uh, we we saw the kind of uh, wrangling which happened in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu after Jaya's death, and all the family members came clamoring. Then there were two camps: uh, Paneer Selvam, then Sasikala, and so I mean those kind of reports are bound to come up there. You have to understand that uh, firstly, in in Jaya's case, there was no immediate family at all. I mean, really, Sasikala was I think her only real family. In her lifetime, there was nobody else. In Naveen Babu's case, uh, he's got his sister, he's got an elder brother. They're a very close-knit family. So, I, as far as the family is concerned, there's, there's no comparison at all. Uh, you know, he's got nephews, nieces. There's a very large, very well-knit, very happy family. And you don't see the Naveen uh, charisma at all fading as compared to the Modi charisma? The Naveen charisma in Orissa is unique to both him and to Orissa. Uh, as I told you, in 2014, Narendra Modi tried his best. His charisma didn't pay off in the least bit. In fact, we were, we you know, our, our success in 2014 was unprecedented. We had 14 seats in the Lok Sabha in 2009 when I first won from the BJD. And we went up to 20 out of 21 and the 21st seat we lost by some 12,000 votes. You know, otherwise it would have been like Rajasthan, 21 out of 21 uh, in Orissa. And we got 117 out of 147 in the assembly. So, uh, while earlier we had 103 in 2009. So, you can imagine in the teeth of this absolute juggernaut of Modi, which was traveling all over the country and, you know, reaping harvest for them. Orissa, the people have kept their faith in Naveen so Patnaik, kept say their that faith in the BJD and I think they will continue to do so. So while you say that the two charismas are not comparable at all, but I'm sure the media would put the scanner on BJD and BJP will uh, keep uh, BJD on the tenter hooks. But I'll have to leave it there. I'm really running short of time. So that's it on this episode of To The Point. See you next time with another personality. Goodbye and thanks for watching.